Hello everyone. In this session, I will be discussing about capacity of potential divider. First and foremost thing, let us see why capacity of potential divider is required. Actually, it used to measure fast rising voltage and impulse voltage. The capacity up to 1 megavolt can be measured by using capacity of potential divider. Moreover, harmonic effects will not be considered while doing measurement of capacity potential divider. I mean, uh, the harmonic effect and the noise problem will be completely filtered out if you are using the capacity potential divider. That is one of the positive point. Similarly, capacity potential divider and electrostatic voltmeter will be satisfied the requirement of measurement of high impulse voltage. So actually, uh, both capacity potential divider and electrostatic voltmeter, that is basically a combination that will be used for measurement of fast rising voltage and impulse voltage. Similarly, it obeys the principle of voltage division rule, and same as that of resistive potential divider. Now let us show the circuit diagram of capacitive potential divider and uh, how does it operate. Uh, let's consider the circuit diagram of capacitive potential divider. Our ultimate goal is to measure the high voltage which you applied externally. The overall high voltage that has been divided with the help of capacitor C1 and C2. Here C1 is known as gas filled condenser or gas filled capacitor. It comprises of three terminals. It is also known as high voltage capacitor. Similarly you can observe the second capacitor C2. The C2 is known as shielded capacitor. To avoid the stray loss we are going to provide the suitable shield. This capacitor is made up of either mica or paper. Now, the output of low voltage capacitor, this is C1 and C2, the output of C2, that will be directly connected to electrostatic voltmeter or you can go for vacuum tube voltmeter, VTVM means vacuum tube voltmeter through coaxial cable or delay cable. You can call either coaxial cable or delay cable. Now you are able to get the reading from the electrostatic voltmeter that is in proportional to applied voltage which you are applying over here. That means the applied high voltage that will be directly proportional to the reading which you are going to obtain from this meter. This meter may be either ESV or VTVM. Depends on the situation you can go for either ESV or VTVM. So this is the protective circuit. In case any overcurrent or any problems occurred it protects the meter against overcurrent or any other uneven circumstances. So this is the basic idea about capacitive potential divider. Moving on to next segment of capacitive potential divider. Let me ask one question to you. How do you calculate or how do you measure high voltage which you applied externally? Let us consider the schematic diagram of capacitive potential divider. The whole high voltage has been divided with the help of capacitor C1 and C2. Uh, this is actually low voltage arm. As you can see V2 of T. This particular term is actually low voltage arm. This will be high voltage arm. Now, we have to measure V2 with the help of either electrostatic voltmeter or you can measure with the help of VTVM that we already learned. You should know the value of capacitor C1 and C2. C1 will be high voltage capacitor and C2 will be LV capacitor. LV capacitor means it may be either mica or paper. It is made up of either mica or paper. Moreover, you need to know the meter capacitance. Meter capacitance will be in the range of 50 picofarad. Usually, it is the, while taking designing, uh, we will be considered the value of CM. That means meter capacitance that is equal to 50, 10 to 50 picofarad. Now, let us explain how to calculate the voltage which you applied externally. This high voltage that has to be measured. Let me call the high voltage which you applied is V1. V1 equal to V2 into C1 plus C2 plus Cm divided by C1. Uh, what is V2? How, uh, how did you get the value of V2? V2 is nothing but the reading. That means electrostatic voltmeter or VTVM you can use to get the value of V2. C1, C2 we already know the value of capacitors. While designing we should know the value of C1 and C2. The meter capacitance will be approximately 50 picofarad. If you have to substitute all the values over here, I am able to get how much voltage which you applied externally. So this is a simple method how to measure applied high voltage externally. Usually this kind of voltage will be either fast rising, fast rising voltage or it may be impulse voltage or high pulses. This can be easily measured with the help of capacity potential divider. 
Now, while doing the designing, uh, one of the important factor that is known as attenuation factor that plays most important role for the designing. How do you calculate the attenuation factor? It is the ratio of V1 of T divided by V2 of T. That is nothing but 1 plus C2 by C1. Whenever you are doing the simplification, you are able to get the value of attenuation factor that is equal to 1 plus uh, C2 divided by C1. I know the value of C1 and C2. Obviously, you can able to calculate attenuation factor. So, this is the way you are able to calculate the total voltage which you applied externally with the help of capacity potential divider. Now, let me figure out some advantages of capacity potential divider. So, there are few advantages of using a capacity potential divider such as number one, a loading on source is negligible. The meter will not consume any power from the source. That is one of the major advantages factor uh, regarding capacity potential divider. Furthermore, the capacitive ratio will be totally independent of, of frequency. It is 100% independent of frequency. That is another advantage. While doing the designing, you can say that capacitive effect, the frequency effect, the frequency effect will be negligible. So, that is another advantage regarding capacity potential divider. Moreover, the result will be accurate. That is another advantage it can be added. Now, if I mention about drawbacks, the first and foremost thing, the selection of high voltage capacitor is difficult. That is the main draw drawback. Moreover, stray loss, stray loss will be there because of the connecting leads. Stray capacitance will be influenced in that particular method. That may cause more errors. So, these are the main drawbacks which we can uh, point out. Finally, let me conclude the session. At the beginning, I have explained why capacity potential divider is required. It is typically for measurement of impulse voltage. Similarly, I have explained the circuit diagram with the working and uh, how do you calculate the voltage V2? That means how much voltage which you apply by using one equation. And eventually, I have discussed about pros and cons of uh, capacity potential divider. This is my reference. Finally, thank you for watching this video. If you found this channel most interesting, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.